Hello again. Uh, I hope you've all had a good vacation and you're ready to go with Shakespeare once again. I, I've been thinking over the holidays that it's a, a good time to brush up on your Shakespeare. So uh, uh, my class will be on Thursday afternoon at 2.30. We basically finish out the week with our academic classes, and so this is a good one. Uh, I, For those of you who have been with me before, you know what the class is like. You know, we, we do Reader's Theater, uh, and you all have a chance to read if you would like to. Uh, you don't have to memorize it. You don't have to study it ahead of time. You can just come and enjoy, and we have a lot of fun with it. Mainly, we're, we're looking at enjoying the, the Shakespeare and not looking at it as an academic subject that you have to try to remember everything. <clears throat> we'll be doing two plays this semester. The first will be Coriolanus, which uh, some of you are saying, I don't know anything about that. And you're welcome to a big club because most of us don't know much about Coriolanus. It's only been done, uh, as near as I can find, one time in the, the history of the Shakespeare Festival in Cedar City. But they are doing it again this next summer, so we'll take a look at it. Uh, it's an interesting play. Uh, it's one of Shakespeare's later plays, and it uh, has to do with, with Rome, and particularly about the fall of Rome, and some of the reasons why Rome did fall. Uh, it involves around one particular military general, uh, uh, who became named Coriolanus after a battle, and they bestowed that name on him as a, an honor. Uh, one of the questions that you have in the play is, uh, how do you balance doing what is expedient with what you feel to be right? And uh, even if what you feel to be right may not be right, which is intriguing. For Coriolanus, in a way, life is a matter of black and white, and we tend to look at things as a lot of shades of gray. This is a tragedy. Coriolanus will be an adventure for all of us. Uh, we'll get started on it. That'll be our first play. And once we finish that, we'll move right into the second play, which is everybody's favorite, I think, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Midsummer Night's Dream gives you uh, some looks at um, young love and what people think is true love with some uh, irate parents. They also have a, another case of of love between the Duke and his lady, uh, and uh, young people going off into the forest to get up, try to get away from dad and, and escape to the country where they can uh, live life the way they would like to. Uh, a lot, all does not go smoothly, however, because the fairies get involved, and uh, they the king of fairies is having a spat with the queen of fairies, and uh, and as a result, they play tricks on the young people who are out there in the forest and uh, on a group of, of mechanicals. They're common working people who have gone out there to practice a play. And they do some magic and play some pranks on them, which uh, is really builds the comedy to the point where we have a lot of fun with the play. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream is one that you can enjoy. And remember with comedy, uh, the people who are in error are brought to judgment, and those uh, people who were wronged are things are righted, and they will enjoy uh, life afterwards. And we can sit back and, and say that we know that it's going to work out. And I do hope you'll take the, the opportunity to find out that Shakespeare can be enjoyed. Uh, and if you just want to come and, and listen, that's perfectly okay too. Thanks to everybody.